Hello, I'm Dr. Marianne Teitelbaum, and today we're going to talk about acid reflux. Acid reflux is really common nowadays with over 60 million Americans experiencing heartburn at least once a month and at least 15 million experiencing symptoms every day. Symptoms could include burning pain in the chest that might worsen when you lie down. This is the most common symptom. But if you have a hoarse voice or a chronic cough, that could also be a symptom. Since if the throat or the esophagus is burnt, the body reflexively makes mucus to lubricate it, which causes a chronic cough. Many people have this cough and they just think it's a cough when really it's the acid reflux. Now, the underlying cause of acid reflux is said to be loosening of the lower esophageal sphincter, which is a band of muscle that acts like a valve and it lets food into the stomach but not back up into the esophagus. Now, when this valve gets weak, then the stomach contents are regurgitated back into the esophagus, causing heartburn. So while this may be true, let's take a deeper look at why the lower esophageal sphincter might weaken in the first place. And as usual, there's more than one underlying cause and probably several going on at the same time in most people. Now, normally, once we swallow the food, it goes from the mouth into the esophagus, through the lower esophageal sphincter, and then it enters the stomach. The stomach contains hydrochloric acid, and it turns the food into kind of like a liquid acid. Once the food's liquid, it squirts through another sphincter called the pyloric sphincter into the duodenum. Now, the duodenum is the beginning of the small intestines. And just as a reminder, the small intestine feeds into the large intestine, then the food exits as a bowel movement at the end of the large intestine. Once the food enters the duodenum, a signal is sent to the gallbladder to release the bile, which is a very alkaline fluid, which helps to not only digest the fats in our diet, but it also has the effect, since it's so alkaline, of alkalinizing the acids as they pour into the duodenum coming from the stomach. Now this is important to understand because the gut lining doesn't have the protective layer that the stomach has to protect itself from the acids. The bile also creates what's called peristalsis or little muscular contractions that move the food downwards through the gut. But there are many reasons why the bile might not squirt out even after receiving its signal and if this happens and it doesn't squirt out, the acids will move upwards back into the esophagus and start to burn that area. Now, why would the bile not flow properly? Well, for one thing, if the thyroid gland is weak, the gallbladder gets weak at the same time. And it turns out that the thyroid acupuncture meridian feeds directly into the gallbladder meridian. So that means that if the thyroid is weak, the gallbladder automatically becomes weak. That's why so many people who have a weak thyroid gland also develop acid reflux at the same time. So in this case, you have to see what's causing the weak thyroid gland and address that, strengthen the thyroid, and then use the herbs to fix the gallbladder. But that's another whole discussion which I covered in my thyroid book, which is called Healing the Thyroid with Ayurveda, if you want to delve into it more deeply. Also, if the bile in the gallbladder becomes very thick, like a sludge, it might not flow properly. This could happen if you eat real thick, heavy, gunky foods like cream cheese or peanut butter or other nut butters, almond butter. And this especially happens if you eat ice cold fatty foods like smoothies with heavy oils, like coconut oil blended with frozen fruits, or if you eat ice cream or frozen yogurt. The cold congeals the fats, making it really hard for the bile to remain thinned out. And a similar thing can happen if you eat deep fried foods or heavy red meats, as these heavy fats are also very hard to digest and they can thicken the bile. See, the bile should be like a thin liquid, kind of like a, a consistency of olive oil. But if there are too many cold fats or heavy fats contained within the bile, you run the risk of forming a thick, gunky sludge, which finds it hard to flow. It gets stuck there. Another cause could be that the energy, which resides in the lower intestinal region, 
known as a pana vada. It's a downward flow of energy which pulls the food downwards. It could be that that energy is moving up. See, the vada in our bodies controls the movement of things, like the movement of food through the digestive tract. So if it moves up, then the food moves upwards instead of going downwards the way it's supposed to. And it's this upward pressure which can over time loosen the lower esophageal sphincter, eventually causing the acids to move upwards. And in cases such as these, we have to teach the patient how to relax so that digestion would occur. All the digestive processes come to a halt if your vata goes high, from rushing through the day or going to bed late. In the West, we call it fight or flight. And in this mode, the blood moves out of the digestive tract and into the extremities so you can run away from the danger. See, the fight or flight response was made for an occasional huge stressor, but most of us are living in a constant state of fight or flight every day as we work long hours or we rush through our daily activities. And believe it or not, there are many herbs which can move the energy back downwards through the digestive tract. These usually have to be given to our acid reflux patients along with the herbs, food, and teas which promote the flow of bile out of the gallbladder. You know, I remember when I first started reading books on herbs when I was a teenager, I noticed right away that on every other page of my herb books were herbs which promoted the bile flow out of the gallbladder. And I remember wondering why nature had given us so many herbs for bile flow. And then when I started my very busy practice and seeing patients every day for the last 30 years, I could see very early on in my practice that just about every other patient had problems with the flow of bile out of the gallbladder. It's going to happen to every one of us sooner or later, usually many, many, many times in a lifetime. And just about every case of acid reflux I saw had the gallbladder as the main cause of the problem, not too much stomach acid as we're kind of led to believe. Which brings me to the next point. Is taking acid reflux medicines the best mode of treatment for acid reflux? Is it safe? Is it the right way to treat this? And what are the side effects? Well, after seeing my thousands of acid reflux patients over the years, I've come to the conclusion that in some severe cases, acid reflux medicine might be necessary to alleviate more burning of the esophagus but they should only be used temporarily because they have too many side effects. Plus, I also found that promoting the flow of bile out of the gallbladder combined with healing the gut lining from the acids flowing through it and regrowing the friendly bacteria in the gut usually alleviates the acid reflux symptoms. So many times I've been able to help our patients avoid the acid reflux medicines in the first place or slowly wean off them as our herbs kicked in. And yes, you must slowly wean off these medicines because if you just stop them abruptly, more than likely you'll have a rebound of acid requiring you to go right back on them. So just go off slowly. And are these acid reflux medicines safe? I remember when they first came out years ago, patients were told that they could only stay on them for maybe a few weeks because they were very toxic to the liver. But now it seems like most people are on them for extended periods of time, even years. Also, many people are now developing bone loss as a side effect from these drugs. And then many other people started reporting dementia as a side effect. So in 2016, the first study was finally done to see if these drugs can cause dementia. And at the beginning of the study, 0% had dementia but the group who were given the acid reflux medicines developed a 44% increased risk of developing dementia when they were put on the drugs. It was then further studied to see why that was. And it turns out that these medicines cross the blood-brain barrier, which normally seals off the brain from chemicals. Then in May 2020, just very recently, they were finally able to discover how they cause dementia. A study was published in the Alzheimer's and Dementia Journal demonstrating how the proton pump inhibitors, that's the other name for acid reflux medicines, affect the sy synthesis of a neurotransmitter called acetylcholine. And it turns out that these medications 
decrease the production of acetylcholine so signals can't be sent in the brain, which predisposes you to both dementia and Alzheimer's. And here's the other very important thing. Nature made it so that when we eat the food, the first place it goes is into the stomach for good reason. The stomach acids kill any bacteria which might be coming in from the food, from the outside world. This is really important to know because the small intestine, which is where the food goes after leaving the stomach, shouldn't have much bacteria in it. It has to be pretty sterile because this is where our food is being absorbed into the bloodstream. So now if we take away the stomach acids by using a proton pump inhibitor or other acid reflux medicines, guess what could happen? Yes, infection can grow in the small intestines, which is starting to happen at alarming rates now that so many millions of people are on these medicines. And this is called small intestinal bacterial overgrowth, otherwise known as SIBO. And it's a very, very difficult thing to treat. So it would be a better idea to first identify the underlying causes of the acid reflux, address those, promote the flow of bile out of the gallbladder, pull the apana back down, teach the patient how to get out of the fight or flight mode, and then heal the lining of the gut with mucilaginous herbs, which can heal the gut lining by regrowing that thick mucus layer, which should normally be found in the gut. And finally, it's important to regrow the friendly bacteria, which grows within this thick mucus lining. Always remember that the gut has two basic layers, a layer of mucus with friendly bacteria growing in it. And the combination of these two give the gut a nice protective barrier, kind of like in your front lawn, how it has that thick, nice turf of grass growing into the topsoil, so that if a heavy rain comes, the grass prevents the topsoil from washing away. This is a good analogy to help you visualize the gut lining of mucus and friendly bacteria protecting the gut from all kinds of invaders like bacteria and other pathogens. So by following the guidelines outlined here, I've been able to save many people from the side effects of these drugs by getting to the root cause of their acid reflux and showing them through diet, herbs, and teas how to regrow that mucus layer back in the gut and heal both the burnt digestive tract and the gallbladder, preventing both the gallbladder disease and long-term infections in the gut, like SIBO. I hope you found this information useful as you attempt to seek out alternatives to your acid reflux condition. Thank you.